Okay, we've all heard there's two different types of cholesterol. And one is a good type of cholesterol called HDL, and the other is a bad type of cholesterol called LDL. But this explanation kind of drives me crazy because it's wrong, um, and there's only one type of cholesterol, and we call it cholesterol. I am Dr. James Monroe. And today I wanna to talk about cholesterol because a lot of us get this wrong and we're really freaked out about cholesterol and we shouldn't be. Cholesterol is a very good and very important thing in our body. To start with, we have to clarify the good and bad cholesterol thing because that's not entirely true. Or at least it's a really myopic view of what's happening. Like I mentioned in the beginning, there's actually only one type of cholesterol. HDL and LDL are not two different types of cholesterol. They are lipoproteins. This means that it's a molecule that has fat and protein combined. They are carrier molecules. They take the cholesterol and move them around the body in various ways. HDL, or high density lipoprotein, typically is in charge of taking cholesterol from the peripheral tissues and bringing it back to the liver to be recycled or excreted. LDL, or low density lipoprotein, tends to take the cholesterol from the liver and deliver it out to the peripheral tissues. Both of these molecules have really important jobs and neither of them are bad at all. And also it's worth noting that the cholesterol that they're carrying around the body is exactly the same. Whether it's attached to LDL or HDL, it's the same cholesterol. There's only one type of cholesterol. Cholesterol is really one of the most important things that we have in our body. It is vital for health. Without cholesterol, we can't live. It is found in the cell wall of pretty much every cell in our entire body. It's extremely important in our brain, and it forms the backbone of a lot of other really important things in our body. Testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, cortisol, vitamin D. These all use cholesterol as their backbone. No cholesterol, no hormones. It has a little bit of a bad reputation because too much cholesterol can accumulate inside our blood vessels called atherosclerosis, and that could lead to blood clots, heart attacks, strokes, these kinds of things. And this is where we get the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol thing. HDL, high density lipoprotein, we call that good cholesterol because like I mentioned, we're taking cholesterol from the peripheral tissues and bringing it back to the liver where it can be excreted, recycled, whatever. And so that's good because you're not going to cause a buildup in the blood vessels when you're taking it out of the blood vessels. LDL does the opposite. It takes cholesterol from the liver and delivers it out to the peripheral tissues. And this is where it gets the reputation for bad cholesterol because too much LDL can theoretically fill up the blood vessels and cause heart attacks and all that stuff. But LDL is also the molecule that delivers cholesterol to the tissues that need it to create those hormones, the testosterone, the estrogen, progesterone, cortisol. LDL delivers CoQ10 to our tissues. It is absolutely vital for our survival. When we look at lab tests for cholesterol, the normal range is zero to 200, and anything above 200, uh, you need a statin, and you have to solve this problem immediately or you'll die of a heart attack instantaneously. And we'll talk about the high end of things in just a minute, but let's talk about this zero to 200 being normal. If you have a cholesterol of zero, you're dead. Anything below around 130 is a huge red flag and can cause some major issues. Low cholesterol can cause depression, anxiety, agitation, confusion, memory loss, low hormone levels, fatigue, just a lot of problems. It's also said that you want high levels of HDL and low levels of LDL. And that's true to a certain extent. But if your HDL is too high, that's problematic. And if your LDL is too low, that's problematic. That's a problem we wouldn't typically see under normal circumstances because that is such a fundamental process in the body that the body doesn't make that mistake. But I'm actually seeing it more and more in practice and that's for one single reason, cholesterol lowering medications, statins. Okay, we have to get nerdy here for a second, so bear with me. Statins are a drug that block an enzyme in our body called HMG-CoA reductase. And this enzyme is really important for the production of cholesterol in our body. Without it, we can't make cholesterol. So we take a statin, it blocks that enzyme, and then the body can't produce cholesterol. And this is why it's such an effective drug at lowering cholesterol. But the enzyme, HMG-CoA reductase, does other things too. It's also completely necessary for the production of CoQ10 in our body. CoQ10 is extremely important for heart health, 
energy, metabolism, muscles, a bunch of stuff. So when we take a statin, we also block the body's production of CoQ10. If you are currently taking a statin and you're not also taking a CoQ10 supplement, you have a doctor that's not paying attention. CoQ10 deficiencies in patients that are taking statins are extremely common. And I find it ironic that someone would prescribe a medication that's really geared towards preventing cardiovascular issues that actually blocks something that prevents cardiovascular issues. And if you're taking a statin, you need to be monitoring your CoQ10 levels and probably supplementing as well. And since I'm clearly starting a rant about statins, let's go for it. It doesn't appear that statins are helpful in primary prevention. This means preventing something that hasn't happened before. So it won't prevent your first heart attack, but it does appear to be helpful in secondary prevention. This is after you've had a heart attack and your cholesterol levels are really high, statins look like they'll actually prevent a second heart attack. This issue of statins not being effective in primary prevention is actually a little bit controversial, but I haven't seen anything that convinces me that it works. So if you have any data you'd like to share, let me know, I'd love to see it. So when we're looking at all this stuff, cholesterol levels above 200, not immediately a red flag for me. There's so much more to consider. If we have higher levels of cholesterol, now we have to look at the balance between HDL and LDL. How is this cholesterol moving in the body? If your HDL is very low and your LDL is very high, that's telling us that your body is delivering this cholesterol to the tissues, but it's not bringing it back. So that's strange, what's going on? But if you have a higher level of cholesterol, let's say 220, and your HDL and LDL are in really good proportions, I'm not worried about that. And there's also so much more to it than that because it's not just LDL is LDL and that's it. That's all there is to it. It's way more nuanced. We have to consider particle size. How big are those LDL molecules? We want them bigger and kind of fluffier. We don't want them small and dense. And are these LDL molecules oxidized? That's a major problem. These are all things that can easily be measured and they should be measured if you're at all interested in your cardiovascular health because even if you have a relatively low level of LDL, but they are small dense LDL particles and they're oxidized LDL particles, you have a huge problem still. And you can kind of see the things that I'm talking about with LDL, they really don't have much to do with the cholesterol itself. The cholesterol isn't the problem. Having really high cholesterol levels is obviously a problem that needs to be dealt with, but pretty commonly it can be dealt with with diet and exercise. There are also plenty of supplements that can be really helpful. Statins are necessary in certain situations, but mostly those are kind of genetic issues where the cholesterol levels are just through the roof all the time and there's nothing you can do about it. Or sometimes they can be helpful when your cholesterol levels are really high and it is mostly lifestyle related, but you gotta get the ball rolling. But then on top of those statins, you gotta be exercising and eating right and doing all those things too. And then when the cholesterol levels come down, hopefully you can get off the statins and go back to normal. But the major point I'm trying to make is cholesterol is not the problem. The problem is inflammation, it's oxidative stress. This comes from diet, stress, all of those things. Do you exercise? Are you sleeping enough at night? Are you happy? These are the types of things that can contribute to the issue that can eventually lead to heart attacks or strokes or other cardiovascular issues. We can't have totally out of control cholesterol levels but even if we have normal cholesterol levels, we still might have a big problem that we have to deal with. The solution to all these cardiovascular issues is not a cholesterol level below 200, uh, LDL level below 100, and HDL level above 50. That's not the solution. The solution is to address the causes of that plaque buildup in the arteries. The things that cause the small dense LDL particles, the things that cause the LDL particles to oxidize, the inflammation, these basic cholesterol measurements can be a helpful guide to tell us where we're at, but it's not everything. Exercising is one of the best things you can do to change the HDL and LDL levels. As you exercise, you're forcing your metabolism to speed up, which turns over these cells, and your body will respond by increasing HDL to help recycle the cholesterol and more appropriately regulating the LDL. I'm a big fan of supplementing with omega-3 fatty acids or fish oils. The use of fish oils to address these kinds of issues has definitely been criticized in the past, but it's unwarranted criticism. Even if supplementing with fish oils doesn't change all the levels of your cholesterol, take a look at the particle size of the LDL. Take a look at the oxidized LDL. These numbers will change for the better. 
I also like to use bergamot extract for cholesterol and cardiovascular issues. Take a look at the video here. Cholesterol and cardiovascular health is yet another super complex issue, and I just really glossed over and ranted about just a few things. If I forgot something, you have a question, you wanna hear more about it, let me know in the comments and we can continue the discussion. But I hope this helped to kind of put things into perspective and make you see cholesterol in a different light because cholesterol is awesome and we definitely need it. And I don't want you thinking that less cholesterol is better. because It's not. Okay, that's it. Please like, subscribe, share the video, all that fun stuff. I always appreciate that. I hope you're great, but I hope tomorrow is even better.